kangaroo. Before we get started, I just want to stop and thank you guys for all the support over the past year and change. Uh, as you guys can probably guess by this video, I was able to get early access to the Planet Zoo Wetlands Animal Pack, and that's all thanks to all of you guys at home. Whether you're a new viewer or you have been here since the Leafs Animal Farm days, you guys know how much I appreciate you, and you guys know how much you guys all mean to me. So while we say that, I just want to thank you guys and welcome you all to Boggy Bottom Zoo. I know, quite a fun name if I do say so myself. Uh, this is essentially going to be a mini zoo based around the Wetlands DLC. Uh, and it's going to have a bunch of different animals that kind of relate to all that stuff. And me just cramming as much stuff in here as possible. So as you guys can probably tell already, we are building on the um, on that Wetlands map that we did get in the Arctic DLC. I think it's the Estonia campaign. I know, quite a weird country to throw in here, but still really awesome map. Um... To really build wetland zoos on and i thought it would be perfect to do some kind of like semi-modern kind of zoo uh and one of the things i really wanted to build in was australia yes you guys know how much i love australia you guys know how much i love australian wildlife and australian zoos and we're gonna try and cooperate as much of that stuff in here as possible and we even have a lot of different things going on in this zoo in particular now, as you guys can probably see, we are starting off with an entrance. I know, this is pretty much a first for this channel. Uh, I never build entrances, if you guys are new here. So this is very much stepping out of my comfort zone. But I am very happy with how well this one came out. This one is, in fact, based off of Akron Zoo. If you guys have seen that entrance, it is extremely iconic. It's very angular, and I was like, you know what? I think we can kind of turn this into the vibe of our entire zoo. So that's kind of exactly what we're doing over here. We're doing a bunch of custom stuff. We're doing like custom wall panels. We're doing custom doors, custom windows. And I'm even using Haribo's um, flexi color brick set over there. So we have all that going on. I haven't really been using too many blueprints. I've kind of made it in. Uh, I just need to finish up the Spectacled Cayman and then the Nile Lechway and Asian Wire Buffalo Habitats. Uh, and then I will have built for, like, all the animals, so you guys probably can guess where I am when I am, like, doing this voiceover later down the line. Either way, um, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Uh, I'm very excited for the zoo. Like, the whole theme of here is really fun, and I hope you guys are so excited for it. So, as you guys can probably tell from the thumbnail of this video, um, we are building for the platypus today and that's specifically why i wanted to build in australia now do keep in mind this will not be a 100 percent realistic zoo in fact the platypus habitat is nothing like what you would see in a real life zoo i just want to say that right off the bat but i have not built creatively like this in such such a long time and i really just wanted to sit down and build not really a fantasy kind of zoo but a zoo where i don't really need to care about you know restrictions but i still want to build with some in mind so of course i know so many of you guys already know because i keep on saying this over and over again that flamingos in particular aren't in allowed in australian zoos it's actually quite funny because of that because someone actually tried to strangle a flamingo and i think that's a whole context behind it they're like nope we're not doing flamingos anymore they, uh, australia has some really weird import and export laws if you actually take a look at that but if you guys can probably tell what's going on over here we are building in australia so we can house the platypus now the platypus is only found in one zoo outside of australia and that is the san diego zoo uh they don't really breed well in captivity they're still trying to figure out how to get that to work out well so that is something to keep in mind once san diego does breed them i think australia is kind of being like yeah you guys can just give them to all the other zoos if you guys want good luck breeding them pretty much so that kind of sucks i'm not gonna lie because the platypus is such an interesting animal um i really do like them of course they're very iconic from phineas and ferb and whatnot but they're just so cool um they are monotremes which means that they actually can lay eggs and they're one of the only kinds of mammals to actually do so the others being echidnas and i think there's another one in there somewhere but i don't really remember i apologize and then we have marsupials that kind of branched off of there 
but essentially what we're working with over here you guys can see i'm very much leaning into the akron style over here and i'm really happy with how well it turned out it felt very modern and we even do some like color changing of like you know the palette and stuff the palette in particular is one that i really really do love you can see me doing a custom wood wall right there too just because you know i really just want to do custom walls you know, I, I was feeling frisky. I was feeling dangerous today. So I figured, you know what? We're going to do something fun and frivolous, if I do say so myself. Now, uh, kind of just rounding out those corners. I do apologize if you're not into building for uh, entrances. You can skip about halfway through the video. We do get started on the platypus over there. But I do go over some very interesting building techniques over here. Uh, just as a way to really illustrate how you guys can build some really killer entrances. This is probably one of my favorite ones I've done. Um, obviously, I'm not really going to do a parking lot. Uh, that's something that I tend to lump in with a lot of my zoos nowadays. But unfortunately, I don't really have the space to do it. I'm kind of building on the edge of the map because the Estonia map is very small. So do keep that in mind when you guys are, you know, let's just say you want to build on that map. And, um, you do realize it's not that much space. Um, but yeah. So, essentially what I have going on over here, I have a very interesting theme going on. So, I do have four main sections. And I'm very excited about them. So, we're going to talk about that because I did plan out this entire zoo in advance. And this is the first time that I've ever really done something like this. So, the entrance area, of course, we kind of get started on that. But the first habitat that we build in is going to be our Outback Trails. That's the name of it. I have the key on my little map right here. Uh, it's going to be called the Outback Trails. And that's going to consist of dingoes, red kangaroos, koalas, and of course the iconic platypus. And by the way, oh my god, can we please talk about the new scenery and foliage in this pack? It is to die for i love those cypress trees and i also love the other cypress tree that's what i'm gonna call it from now on that is now trade up uh, trademarked um it's just the brighter cypress tree and they're really beautiful i love using them as like normal trees though if you sink them into the ground far enough they actually do look like normal trees i start to do that once we actually hit the asian small clod otter exhibit but i'm getting too ahead of myself now after the um outback trails section we will get started on the asian adventures section that's going to consist of asian small clawed otter and a mixed habitat between uh water buffalo and nile lechway i know the nile lechway are not found in asia but i'm just gonna lump them in there just because i feel like having a nice hoof stock yard will work extremely well when done right so that's something i really want to do over there uh, and in addition to that, we also have the Babarusa, one of my favorite little peccaries. Uh, not really a peccary, but you guys know what I mean. And we also have the proboscis monkey, because I friggin' love those guys. They are one of, like, the only aquatic monkeys, and they actually have hands specifically designed for them to swim. So that's gonna be a really fun habitat to build for as well. And then we have japanese pop and that's going to be our little bit of a japan section it's actually very interesting because while we do have the red crown crane and the japanese macaque in there both very iconic japanese animals i also have the capybara in there i know it's quite a bit of a shock but that's going to be really fun so it essentially kind of covers pop culture back from the Edo period in Japan all the way up to modern times with the capybara and we have some really cool signage that goes along with that it's going to be really cool for you guys to see what I do with that and it's probably my favorite section of the zoo so far uh, and on top of that last but not least we're going very Australia Zoo with this uh, we're making a crocosseum. I was like, you know what? We have too many damn crocodilians now. I just want to put them all in a single crocosseum and watch them go. But all that jokes aside, um, I will have a big crocosseum over there, very much based off of uh, Steve Irwin's Australia Zoo. And we'll also have the Cuvier Swarth Cayman, Saltwater Crocodile. We'll have the Spectacled Cayman, and we'll also have the American Alligator all together. Uh, not in one habitat, but they'll all have their own little pools and habitats and whatnot. So that's essentially what we have going on over there. And I think I'll even make a cafe too, because I have not used restaurants yet. And I think this is a perfect zoo to do so, because it's nice. It's a digestible zoo too. It's nothing too crazy or like magnificent that like, you know, Tear Garden was. Uh, so hopefully we don't abandon this guy, knock on wood. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, that's essentially what we have going on over there. And we should probably talk about the build now that we're like, you know, done talking about planning. Uh, I don't actually do any interior work in here. Um, I kind of save that for later. So once we actually do do that uh, cafe speed build or something, maybe I can incorporate one of those new exhibit animals into here. I feel like that'd be kind of cool. Maybe we can incorporate the Danube Crest and Newt in here. That'd be a really fun animal to build for. And of course, you guys know, we have a bunch of other awesome aquatic and semi-aquatic uh, exhibit animals. So we can include those all throughout the entire zoo and whatnot. That'll be a really fun thing to build for once we actually do get into the smaller jazz. But that's essentially the plan right there. And I really do love just how the architecture of this building came out. It's based on Akron from the front. And then I kind of just did my own thing when it came to everything else. So you guys can tell I do like to reuse some things for the most part. Uh, I did like to reuse like the kind of entrance over there on like the exit of the building. Just because I like how the angles work together. And I thought it worked exceptionally well over there. And you can see us getting started on a faux mud wall. Uh, I usually use the tree branches when I do this unmodded. By the way, we are doing this completely unmodded. Uh, in case if you guys are already aware, some of the mods did break. They did break the trade center, but I assure you, Inaki will be probably, um, <laughs> once I tell him, uh, Inaki will probably be getting on that as soon as possible so that we could get all those mods fixed up as soon as you guys possibly want. But, I'm using this as a wonderful opportunity to do a completely unmodded zoo once again. And yes, I don't even have free build installed. Can you guys believe that? Uh, I know, it's it's very shocking and it's very scary. But, um, you know what? Who needs those 2 meter and 3 meter paths? I mean, I still kind of do, but who who knows? Who knows? Okay, well, we'll ignore all that jazz. You can see me start to work on the foliage palette for this entire zoo. I'm actually using the underwater hydrilla grass as real grass this time around because I just fell in love with that texture and it looks incredible when put down in like these larger clumps and it just adds this beautiful dark shade to um all these kind of covered kind of like um all these covered very forested areas and I'm also using those reeds as well as well as our tried and true uh, dogwood bush or dog rose bush. I still don't know the name of that. It's been a whole ass update and I still don't know the name of that thing. But you can see us starting to work on this plaza. Again, the map is kind of based off of Akron Zoo for the most part, including like this opening area. I just have this be relatively simple and we will connect them in between episodes, like connecting this area with the other areas in the zoo. So we'll get to work on that when I actually do get the chance. But essentially what you can see me doing right here is starting to work on a little plaza. And I do this little bit of a compass rose. It's not a real compass. I didn't really want to use one from the workshop just because, you know, I've been using way too many workshop things as of late. I kind of want to just be like, you know what, Leaf? Do it yourself for once. Come on. Get with it. So we essentially do that. Pretty much the only blueprint that I've actually used our uh, leader sun sails, which we actually will see in just a little bit once we actually do get to the platypus habitat. And I also do use Haribo's mud, not mud walls, but uh, faux rock walls. No, 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 just simple stone walls. Yeah. Um, okay, here we actually get to the platypus habitat. And we should probably talk about this because I made it quite a little bit too big. Uh, that's one of my biggest regrets. Um, I actually no i'm not taking it as regret i'm pretty happy with how it is um it's very spacious for them we only have two platypi in here so that's a little bit of a shame but you know what maybe later down the line i could actually turn on breeding and maybe we could get some of those baby platypus in there if in case if i haven't already put it out or in case if you guys are curious i will have a video coming out with all the animals all of the enrichment animations, all of the babies and maybe some of the color variants i'm not really too sure as of yet but we'll have all that jazz coming up relatively soon. Very interested, interested to see how you guys respond to all these animals. Because as I've been playing with them all, they are incredible, I have to say. The crane surprised me. It really did. 
Um, it's probably one of my favorite animals, and I gave it such a beautiful habitat that I can't wait for you guys to see that. That should be coming out in a couple of days, so keep your eyes posted for that. And even all the sound animation sounds, not even animations, animations are great, but all the sounds in this update are incredible. All of like the squeaks from the otters, all of like, you know, the little chirps from the capybara, the cranes are so friggin' annoying. You guys have no clue. I've been building with them for the past few days and they won't shut up. It's annoying. But all that being said, it's very awesome. I really do love having these birds in the game. Uh, but you know what? Enough talk about the birds. We should probably talk about the platypus. What I also include in here is a little bit one of those uh, small burrows that the platypi can use now. Uh, I kind of put that in that little island in the middle of this habitat. I very much like how that all came out. And what I also do, I do a backstage for these guys. I know. I know I said I really didn't want to lean too hard into the realism, but I really just wanted to build a backstage. I don't know why, but it was just so simple just to put like, you know, a nice little pool in there. And I'm very happy with how well that came out because I don't know, now our platypus can actually get some time away from the guests. And they could kind of go there if they so please because they are very sensitive animals keep in mind they are nocturnal don't really know why i have them in this big open exhibit i really wanted to build these beautiful large sun sails sunshades i guess you could kind of say right over this entire exhibit but unfortunately it really wasn't in the cards i do some smaller ones and i really am happy with how well they turned out uh in fact i think i will probably have a building set for uh, Boggy Bottom Zoo relatively soon. Uh, I do have it already set up for the Japan episode, so you guys can probably see those come into play in a couple of days. But I do want to steal some stuff from this habitat over here and maybe work that into the blueprints for you guys. You'll see that come up relatively soon. I don't even know if it'll be out by today, by the time that this video comes out. And I'm like, hey, by the way, guys, you guys can have fun with this or something. You see, I don't really know, but I think we'll have a lot of fun with this. Um, going through here, you can see me start to use a lot more of the mud walls that I kind of created before. Uh, and I'm very happy with them. They're not the same ones, as I said before, that I usually do. In fact, they're a lot different than they um, ever have been in the past that I've ever built for, but I'm very happy with them. I'm taking some like advice from Remnant. He has this very unique way of tackling the mud walls, and I really do love it. So I hope you don't mind, Remnant, if I did steal some ideas from you. But I'm also working on this little island over here. Um, obviously, the platypi don't really need that much space, so I'm kind of making this uh, the best as I can in order to minimize the space that I gave them. So I do have a couple of different walls going on through here. I do have some areas blocked off from the platypus just because they are very agile and very nimble. I don't want them to escape whatsoever because they costed me a little fortune, if you guys could believe that. But just trying to narrow down the amount of space that they could actually navigate through just so that you always know where to look for these guys. I was very much inspired by, um, what's the zoo? I, I, but I was inspired by a couple of zoos. Taranga's was a huge one. Um, San Diego's habitat was a little bit of inspiration, but there was this platypus reserve, like, in the wild that I was actually very inspired by, so that's kind of what I did as well. It was a very interesting kind of setup. There was just, like, this big boardwalk, and that's kind of what I'm trying to exemplify right over here as well. And it kind of looks pretty good in the end. I don't know, I really do like how all that came out. And it feels very nice, very natural, and very, um, I don't know how else to describe it. It feels nice. Um, and we also do a little bit of realism. <laughs> you know, I just can't get enough of that realism. I do a little bit of realism below that. I have this kind of fenced off section that kind of has, um, I don't know how you describe it. It kind of has, like, a mesh so that the platypi can't get under there and you kind of have like all these roots kind of growing out from there it looks very cool in the end and you'll see it come into play in just a little bit but yeah just trying to make this entire section be as like secure as possible because they are very sensitive animals the platypus and i don't want them to get hurt whatsoever they are my babies and i will be extremely upset if anything ever does happen to them 
Uh, moving on through here, just trying to add the rest of that jazz. Uh, I kind of lower it over there just because I want to have this feel as open as possible. And from the guest perspective, from the main walkway, I wanted to make sure that you guys were able to find out that you are able to actually traverse up there. And it looks pretty good in the end. And you can see me actually adding that mesh right there. And I love how well that looks. I love the color that I picked out for it too. It's a nice teal, kind of a little bit of a play on color with uh, our good friend Perry. So we kind of have that all going on right over there. And we do add a bunch of reeds and stuff to make it feel a lot more dense over there. And that also works to keep the platypus away from the rest of the guests. Uh, it kind of pushes them away from that area because it is a little bit too dense for them to traverse. And yeah, we're just adding a lot more hydrolograss to the actual water this time around. I know, very shocking. And we also do a little bit more decoration and a little bit more security, making sure that the platypus isn't able to escape through there. And you can see me also adding some more rock walls right there just to make sure that the platypus cannot escape. Uh, adding some other greens here as well just to make that feel a little bit more dense that's another hint that i took from san diego they have this beautiful faux rock wall right behind the platypus habitat that's very dense and very um packed with foliage if that makes sense and i kind of wanted to do that so i kind of did that and of course platypi are swimming animals so it only made sense to have a little bit of an underwater viewing area for them and i really love how this one came out it's kind of like a little bit of a shack nothing crazy at all in fact it's very simple but i think that's very effective for an animal like this because it kind of takes away all the attention from that place itself but gives all the attention to the animal and the exhibit tree and doesn't really hammer you down with like you know like all these things happening inside that exhibit i don't know i'm very happy with that but here i am working on this sun shale i wanted to use the rusted beams because they had this very unique texture that i really wanted to replicate over here and we have this be kind of clean up there so we have all of these wonderful pieces that um came from the base game of course i'm using the art shapes and we kind of do a little bit of an interesting kind of pattern over here it's very circular it very much reminds me of the original uh australia pieces but I really want to have it have my own little spin on that. So we kind of have all these different colors come into play. And they do cover up a lot of the shade for the platypus so they don't get too freaked out by the sun. Moving on through here, my friends. I am adding a roof. And I'm very happy with this one. It's very simple, very effective. Uh, I'm using a lot of the corrugated iron over here because it's such a beautiful and very versatile piece. That I, I'm just very happy with it. What else can I say? It's just very effective. Also adding a few wood pieces over there as well, just to keep the area feeling a lot more secure and a lot more rural. As you guys can probably guess, Platypi live in relatively rural kind of marshlands. Not really marshlands, but more so lakes and kind of like small ponds. Uh, and it's very much not really uh, populated out there when it comes to Australia. So you kind of have to go right out into the bush to find them. But when you do find them, this is kind of like the architecture that you might be able to find when you do try and scope these guys out. But I want to add a few other things as well, just kind of like give that a little bit more security up there. Maybe I could throw some props up there, maybe like some sacks and stuff, make it feel like a, uh, you know, kind of like an outback station or something like that. And here we go, leader. Thank you so much, my friend. Jenkoya, and all my kindest regards to you. Your sun sail set has absolutely stolen my heart, and it works exceptionally well over here. So I'm kind of securing those guys down a little bit with some concrete pieces. And of course, I needed to work on the rest of the exterior of the habitat. As you guys probably know, I kind of love building for guests more than the actual um, animals themselves. And it's just really fun. And also what I wanted to do over here, I wanted to build a little bit of a sign for a platypus. So I kind of do a little bit of... Um, not really billboard work because billboards do seem very time consuming for me and I'm not really the biggest enjoyer of them. I always love to do stuff by hand and with like small pieces I feel like it gives it a little bit more charm that uh, billboards kind of just like don't really do. Uh, moving on through here um just adding some more planters this is a long ass episode this is not what i'm used to i hope you guys enjoy it it's very much like three hours worth of content so i hope you guys enjoyed this big old speed build i'm not really used to doing stuff this big um i th i remember the koali golf one that one was like 45 minutes but oh my god never doing that kind of jazz again but moving on through here you guys can see i have very much developed a style for kind of like fencing and stuff 
unfortunately i don't show it off for all you guys again a lot with the curbing work that i do in los monsteros i know it's not the most entertaining thing in the world you guys pretty much get the idea after i do it for just a little bit i also add that painting back there the canvas over there just because i don't know it feels very bright and it feels like it's a little bit of a pop that this building really needed uh moving on through here though i really want to add some decals to this entire thing just to make it feel a little bit more grungy but i don't think i actually include them later down the line i want to have like that moss kind of like act like there but listen we made it to the end of the episode i know it's so freaking crazy but i'm so happy you guys were able to join me for this hope you guys enjoyed not only mine but all my fellow creators speed builds coming out today i know you guys are probably watching your rudies and your beyond drews and your the lady designers and your simply savannas uh but listen i'm just happy you guys made good old time for little low leaf but all that being said, the Wetlands Animal Pack DLC is now officially up on Steam. I really do recommend you guys go check that out. I will have a giveaway soon. Uh, keep your eyes posted. I think we'll have it for the Capybara video. Uh, so keep your eyes posted for that. Always stay tuned. And I'm also going to be working with the admins of the Planet Zoo Discord server to do a contest, which would also give away a wetlands dlc code i believe i if not then i'll give it to them for no reason but anyways thank you guys so much for watching enjoy the rest of the b-roll and i cannot wait to see you guys in our next episode where we build for our asian small clawed otters so thank you guys so much for watching and i cannot wait to see you guys in the next episode take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days Bye bye now <laughs>